All right, guys, welcome back to the third unit of Biology 224. Today, we're going to be going over Lab 14, the urinary system. Just a quick reminder, we're not going to be going over every single term in this section. We are going to leave some out for you to discover on your own with the TA, with your DA, using all the other resources that you have and using the time that you have in the lab setting. We're going to start off by talking about some of the anatomical structures of the kidney. Starting off with the fibrous capsule or the renal capsule. It's just this outside covering of the kidney. We have the renal hilum, kind of like you had a hyla of the lungs that represented the vasculature of your lungs. This is going to represent the vasculature of your kidneys. We have renal sinuses, that's all these spaces in here in between your calluses. So jumping down to kind of the bottom of this section, you have a renal pelvis. It's this giant widening right here, which will further subdivide into your major calluses or a major calyx, singular. And then over here, these individual ones are gonna be your minor calyxes. So all those spaces in between these are gonna be your renal sinuses. Kind of going more on the outside part, this layer on the outside of the kidney is going to be our renal cortex. <clears throat> More on the inside, we're going to have our renal medulla. So that layer. We have renal pyramids, kind of one of the more hallmark characteristic features of this. Each of these triangular looking structures is going to be a renal pyramid. Next up, we have renal papilla. That's going to be these tips of each of these pyramids. You can kind of see it becomes like a little more white or pale pinkish on the tips of these pyramids. It's going to be your renal papilla. You have renal columns in between each of your renal pyramids. And then last one is going to be your renal lobe. This one's kind of a weird sort of concept. A renal lobe is a renal pyramid with one half of the renal columns included on either side. So in my lab notebook, I wrote half of a renal column plus the pyramid plus the other half of the renal column. That makes up a renal lobe. So it's the pyramid plus a little bit of those columns on either side. We're going to skip over to some of the vasculature real quick while we're already here just to kind of give you guys a little more idea of what's going on here. We have our renal artery and vein, these big ones. We have interlobar arteries and veins going in between the pyramids or in those lobes. We have arcuate arteries and veins. Those are going to be wrapping around the top portions of those pyramids. And then you have cortical radiate arteries and veins, They're going to be these vessels coming out inside that renal cortex, which is again that layer kind of more on the outside past those pyramids. We're going to jump over real quick to this. This is a cross section of a pyramid. In this, we have a lot of structures we're going to talk about. For example, these are going to be our cortical radiate arteries and veins right here. We have <clears throat> each of these little dots is going to be a glomerulus. Coming right off of the glomerulus is going to be the proximal convoluted tubule. We have a descending limb of your nephron loop, your thin descending limb, your thick ascending limb of your nephron loop, your distal convoluted tubule, and then your collecting duct, which is this giant white tube going down. Just to give you an idea, this is your renal papilla down here, if that helps you kind of like visualize kind of where you're at with this structure. So that's your collecting duct. Now we're going to keep going just a little bit further. This is an individual glomerulus right here. We have the afferent arterial the efferent arterial, so blood flow is going to come in through the afferent arterial and then we'll leave the efferent arterial. 
all this is gonna be your glomerulus. The space on the inside is gonna be your glomerular cap or your capsular space. This is gonna be your glomerular capsule. It surrounds the glomerulus. And then a renal corpuscle is going to be your glomerulus plus the glomerular capsule. So this plus this makes up a renal corpuscle. You guys have a picture of your juxtaglomerular complex in your slides, so you can take a look at that when you get the chance. And then you have podocytes. That's these blue dots that you can see on this section of your glomerulus. Some of the other terms we haven't gone over quite explicitly, such as vasorecta, paratubular capillaries, all that stuff we are going to leave for you guys to work on yourselves. Now we're gonna kind of look at a larger view of the urinary system. So you guys will see this model in lab. You can see up here at the top, we have our kidneys, our ureters, or these little yellow tubes that will come into the posterior end of your kidneys or of your urinary bladder and deposit the filtrate or urine inside your urinary bladder where it will eventually be eliminated. So we'll open this up and we'll kind of take a look on the inside at some of these structures. So again, ureter, these yellow tubes that insert into the urinary bladder. These ridges or these folds on the inside of the bladder are gonna be our rugae of our urinary bladder. So kind of like we had rugae of the stomach, you do have to specify rugae of urinary bladder. We have a detrusor muscle. You can see a little bit better on this model it's this red muscle right here, operates through the autonomic nervous system to provide contractions to eventually eliminate urine. We have ureteral openings. <clears throat> That's where the ureters are going to insert into the bladder. So there's a couple little pink holes on the inside of the urinary bladder. That's the ureteral openings where your, the ureters are going to deposit urine inside the urinary bladder. Next up, we have the trigone. It's this triangle looking structure right here. <clears throat> we have <clears throat> a neck of your urinary bladder. It's gonna be right here kind of at the base. And so other terms on this model do get a little bit confusing. I'm gonna allow you guys some time in lab to look at those yourself. Just remember the trigone is this triangle shaped structure right here. The triangle it makes is with the ureteral openings and the neck of the urinary bladder. Other things like the external urethral orifice, urogenital diaphragm, all that stuff, you're gonna either look in your PowerPoints for a little help or you're going to look in lab for yourself. That's going to conclude the video for this week. Definitely take some time to watch this video, look at all your other supplementary information, and good luck on your quizzes.